Andrew Jackson Davis was a Hudson Valley farm boy who spent his adolescence in the town of Poughkeepsie. He was the son of a poor family and at about age 17 he began to have spiritual visions that he experienced when he went into what was then called a mesmeric trance. And Davis very quickly transformed from being this poor kid who was just off the farm to being a nationally talked about spirit medium. I'm Mitch Horowitz. I am a historian of alternative spirituality. Davis never felt uh, embarrassed or excessively humbled by being from Poughkeepsie. He was proud of being from Poughkeepsie. He felt as if he could show the world what a prophet really looked like, not from the ancient sands of the biblical lands or not from the great uh, universities of Paris or Oxford, but right from an American industrial city in the heart of the Hudson Valley. In many respects, Davis, as a son of Poughkeepsie, is responsible for aspects of the wave of alternative spirituality that swept out of America and across the world in the late 19th, early 20th century. Davis had a remarkable capacity to create these vast metaphysical lectures out of what he said he experienced when he entered his trance states. I think for a lot of Americans, Davis's magical claims were less enthralling than these aspects of his philosophy, which could seem very freeing and very liberating. There were people who wrote and talked about Davis in newspapers, pamphlets, books, lectures. The name Poughkeepsie was probably never so widely heard at the time than it was when people discussed the, uh, the life and teachings of the Poughkeepsie seer. When I'm in Poughkeepsie, I feel it's home. We all have in our heads what I would call a mental map. And this mental map has as its core where one is. And if where one is um, is important to creating this mental map, knowing the history of how this place came to be, what its um, image is to us, becomes a, a, a part of who we are in our own identity. I'm Harvey Flad, a professor emeritus of uh, geography at Vassar College. I'd ask the students, as we were looking at this block, which was now, of course, in the late 20th century, what do we see now? And sometimes it would be a block with uh, a um, a 1930s or 1940s apartment house, or it might be a block that was completely vacant because of urban renewal that came through in the 1950s and 1960s. The students very often were quite uh, intrigued by the fact that they were looking at a landscape that was in change. And all of a sudden, the idea of change began to spark an interest in the fact that cities are not static. We can use the word, I think, organic. It's an organic system.
in theological terms, we, we, we might call what we're in now a liminal time. And a liminal period is, is the in-between state. You're not what you used to be, and you're not yet what you're going to be, but you're in this liminal time. I'm Blake Ryder, the rector at Christ Episcopal Church in Poughkeepsie, New York. It may be right now the Hudson Valley, Poughkeepsie, is in a liminal space. So I can imagine that somebody could walk down Main Street in Poughkeepsie and see the sidewalks and the trees that are barely alive, if they're even there at all, and the hardscape of the buildings. But uh, those things are not permanent. It's the place that is what's important. And somewhere through all of that, some sense of spiritualism is present that transcends Native American religion or Christianity or Buddhism or anything. There's something that's, whether you want to say it's deeper than that or higher than that, you could go either way with that. But it's more real than any of that. In many respects, Davis was one of the earliest and most popular figures to talk about heaven as a place that was populated by all the world's people. And implicitly, what Davis was saying was that salvation was available to every individual, from every religion, from every walk of life. It was Davis who communicated to people very early on that your spiritual search didn't depend upon anything that uh, came before us and didn't depend upon the establishment of great institutions of learning or cathedrals. You could search for God in your barn, at your kitchen table, by your stove, in your workshop. That's what he had done. It was in the trappings of ordinary life. Davis reflected back to people their highest ideals or hopes for themselves. I'm someone who sees the city of Poughkeepsie, sometimes the glass is half full and sometimes the glass is half empty. I do recognize the fact that there are perhaps more individuals who see it half empty than who see it half full. When I first arrived in Poughkeepsie in 2006, almost every conversation was about, well, gee whiz, back in 1992 when IBM laid off tens of thousands of people one summer, we've never been the same. And it was just, it was dreadful. During the heyday of uh, a lot of uh, drugs and crime in um, the uh, 1970s and 80s, I get off the train and with a suitcase full of things and uh, off it went into the whole Mid-Hudson area. When I would take students out on field trips to parts of the city and we would get out and walk on uh, certain areas, you would still um, kick the vials, crack vials, out from under your feet. A young woman, she was offered the chance to, to leave jail and not go to prison, to go on a, on a supervised probation status to finish out her sentence. But the only option she had was to go back to her parents' home. And it was in her parents' home 
where she began to use drugs, and her parents' home where she began to sell drugs, and her parents' home where she began to have a life of prostitution. And she said, rather than go home, I'd rather stay in prison. Davis believed that material life reflected nature and that there were cycles to material life. We in our lives as individuals and we in our lives as communities were always undergoing cycles and changes. And that was a very hopeful part of Davis's work. He believed that if a community or a nation were undergoing difficulty, again, it was just a matter of time until nature's inevitable cycles would bring people back to a place of morale and prosperity and hope. My name is Elizabeth Celaya. I'm the Director of Organizational and Community Development at Hudson River Housing. Our mission is to improve lives and communities. And we do that by providing affordable housing, providing housing services and education, and revitalizing neighborhoods. Right now we are in the Poughkeepsie Underwear Factory. This is a large, vacant, uh, old mill building, and we have a goal of redeveloping this property as a mixed-use uh, property that we hope will serve as an anchor for revitalizing the neighborhood around it. With this, we really built in a whole community building um, set of activities. So we're working in the city right now to, to identify key properties that will put a foothold in the neighborhood. I think there's a lot of interest in the city of Poughkeepsie right now because it does seem like it's on the cusp of something. You do see different groups coming together, particularly in the last few years that have the same vision, that really feel that um, if we all pull together, that we can just, you know, we can reach that tipping point. It's been a wonderful thing over the last six or seven years. No one ever says, oh gee, wasn't it good back in 1991, just before IBM laid off those tens and tens of thousands of people. Anything we're gonna be to change that happens from where we are now, and not thinking back to how good it used to be 13 years ago. There is a, a rebirth, a revitalization is occurring in those areas that were cleared by urban renewal, such as down at the waterfront. The walkway over the Hudson, which was the abandoned railroad right of way across the Hudson River, is now a, a very famous walking path. You see, um, you know, a lot of creativity happening in this neighborhood that you don't find elsewhere in, in the area. We don't know where our next great voices are coming from, where our next artists and prophets and designers and writers are coming from. No one expected uh, one of the most radical and impactful spiritual voices of the 19th century to be found sitting at a cobbler's bench in the agricultural and industrial town of Poughkeepsie. But there he was. More than Davis's philosophy, Americans were enthralled with his persona, his character. He mirrored back to people what they wanted to believe about themselves, which is that they weren't just a butcher or a baker or a farmer. They were a being. If nothing else, Davis is a testament to the fact that we have no idea what will be found in the pages of a person's life or in a town's life. I do believe that uh, the Hudson Valley, and Poughkeepsie specifically, is on a upward track and trend um, that's just going to make this a, a better place to live. I do think that's really important to, to feel like there is a future, and, and maybe that's something that Poughkeepsie has lacked for a while, is a sense that there are better days ahead. But now we've reached a point where I think a lot of people do feel that there can only be something better coming down the road. This is a passage from Davis's autobiography, The Magic Staff, his most accessible book, and it captures his view of human potential and human progress. Man is born near the base of a hill in a valley full of shadows, but once out of the cradle he begins to climb. 
He forthwith struggles and pants, impelled by the invisible force of destiny to attain the summit. With an eye upon a sunny future, but knowing not the pathway, he tugs and frets and tumbles at every turn. The mists of the valley may envelop him. The dreary waste of poverty and disease may stretch away between the hill and him. His path may pass even through the solitudes of the dismal swamp. Undaunted and led by unseen guardians, he pushes boldly forward and gains triumphantly the height of his first ambition.